This is Leopold Aschenbrenner. Let's just call him Leo for short. And this is sand. It turns out if you make sand hot enough, it turns into something that looks sort of like this. Now, AI bros like Leo and, well, me, spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to make sand think. And we're making a surprising amount of progress. Now, Leo here just released a dossier of sorts that a lot of people on YouTube are talking about, but nobody has discussed the things in this essay that I personally think are the most important. Hi, I'm Data Ray. I am a candidate for a PhD in making sand think. I also have an MBA in finance. You'll see why that's relevant here in a minute. Now, before we read the essay, it's always important to get a little bit of context about the author. At least that's how I do research. Okay, so our boy Leo here was on the super alignment team at OpenAI before getting fired for allegedly leaking corporate secrets. Now, those of you who have seen my channel before know that I am generally as respectful as possible to other AI researchers, but Leo is not your ordinary AI researcher. Since he got fired, he's been great. In fact, one might say that he's thriving. He claims to have just opened an investment fund focused on artificial general intelligence, which by the way is theoretical as of right now. He lists these other guys as working with him for this cause. Hopefully at some point, our boy Leo here will be able to afford a second sweater. Anyway, I did some quick due diligence on FINRA's website and I can't find any evidence of our man Leo here having any sort of financial licensing. I am not a lawyer, but I have read this evil monstrosity of a f***ing book. It is illegal for Leo and his bros to be marketing any sort of a fund whether it's a mutual fund or an exchange traded fund before getting a license, before registering the fund with the SEC and before doing this thing called a road show where they show the prospectus to potential investors. That is unless they're doing it as a hedge fund. And if they're doing it as a hedge fund without licenses, they would have to be marketing it only to the very rich. So I know what you're thinking. Why the f is Data Ray telling me this? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's important for you to remember that our boy Leo here is not in fact an AI researcher, at least not anymore. He's a finance bro. Now you might be thinking, Ray, where the f is Leo going to find a crap load of rich people who are going to invest in his fund? He can't have that much investment experience from working at OpenAI. Well, I looked into that too. His only education listed on his LinkedIn is his bachelor's degree. His bachelor's degree is in economics and statistics. So he does at least know a little bit about economics. I will note most economists that run funds have a PhD and we will find out what this guy Leo thinks about PhDs in a minute when we read his essay. We can look at his resume a little further and see that he used to work at the Future Fund. Any crypto bros in my audience now have alarm bells going off? Everybody else who's not a crypto bro is like, what the f is Future Fund? Well, the Future Fund is a fund that was founded by the guy who puts f***er in mother uh, Sam Bankman Freud, Froud, Freed, whatever the f*** his name is, SBF. The FTX guy who stole 
a lot of money from his investors in a giant Ponzi scheme and is now rotting his ass off in jail. Yeah, that guy. Okay, so ordinarily, I wouldn't think it's fair to critique people based on their former employer. It's not like Leo was one of the co-founders. He just worked there, right? Well, it seems like maybe he had more of a relationship with SBF than just the employer-employee relationship. The two of them tend to mingle in similar crowds. Whatever, it's not that important. What I'm trying to communicate to you is that Leo here is not an AI researcher. He is a finance bro. So I brought this up for a reason. Throughout the duration of this video, I need you to remember Leo is a finance bro. I've said it enough times that hopefully you'll remember. He's trying to raise money for his new fund. And with that in mind, we can now read the essay. But before we read it, I need to put on my thinking cap. All right. Now, it's important to keep in mind that Leo might genuinely be trying to sound the alarm on some of this stuff. And we will go over what that stuff could be. But I do want to remind you, he's a finance bro trying to raise money for his fund. He might be trying to sell you something, is what I'm trying to say. All right, let's read the thing. Okay, in this essay, he talks about ooms a lot. Um, and oom is just an order of magnitude. So he says here that by 2027, he thinks we will have AI employees and not just chatbots. He says they'll be as smart as PhDs. Remember, Leo does not have a PhD, but he did work with a bunch of them. This essay is actually dedicated to Ilya Sutskiver, who does have a PhD from the University of Toronto. When I first read this, I thought, boy, this kid must think I'm an idiot for working toward a PhD in AI if he thinks I'm just gonna be replaced in three years. But if he really did think that AI researchers were replaceable or really that any one of us are truly replaceable, he probably wouldn't dedicate this paper to a PhD AI researcher. And you can see here a few lines later, he gives away the punchline by talking about how this theory is not priced in, which is a finance bro term for buy my stuff. Let's skip ahead to this chart on page 15. Leo is claiming that everything above speech recognition is something that an AI can currently do better than a human and everything below it is worse than human capabilities. I've seen a few people talk about this chart, but so far nobody has stated the obvious thing. It's incomplete. If we're going to have an AI that can do everything a human PhD can do, why are all those tasks not listed on this chart? You can't just show the data set you like and leave everything else off the chart. Now, a while back, I made a video where I outlined my thoughts on AGI and I explained what algorithms are comparable to human brain functions. Don't click out of this to go find that video. I will put it in the end screen so you can watch it after this, but there are a lot of brain functions that computers just cannot do yet. If we're going to define something as comparable to human thinking, it'll need to have those functionalities. The one that is obviously absent from his entire essay is emotional intelligence. And I've explained in the past why I think that's something that an AGI will be able to do. Okay, so here he talks about how skeptics continually claim there's no way deep learning can do X thing. I think it's strange that he didn't even entertain the idea of an emotionally intelligent AI in this essay. Maybe it's something that he's just never thought of, but I would find that hard to believe since he was on the super intelligence team at OpenAI. Uh, and I don't want to come off like a doomer myself, but there are some things that are, as of right now, just mathematically impossible. I'll address them 
briefly a little later in the video. But I do want to say I noticed that more than half of the people who have signed up for my email newsletter are using a .edu email address. Now for you guys and anyone else that's interested, I will also make a video showing the math behind these issues that I think are, as of right now, mathematically impossible. If you want a link to it, make sure to sign up to my email newsletter by following the pinned comment. Okay, so here he is discussing growth and compute power. This stuff doesn't just grow on trees. It's very expensive to scale up computing power, which is why Sam Altman wanted to raise capital equivalent to the GDP of Japan. And in my opinion, it's actually going to cost double or maybe even triple that amount of money. Remember, Leo is a finance bro now, so he knows this. Now down here, he talks about how we're breaking Moore's law currently, and he is assuming we can continue to do that. The whole world is scaling up military spending right now, so I'm not sure this pace of spending is sustainable financially. And I will say also at several points in this essay, Leo kind of hinted that he probably knows that and he was expecting that the governments are going to step forward and provide funding toward these projects. I guess we could print money, but to a certain extent, governments also only have so much money. Okay, so I like what he says here where he describes that improving algorithms can make computing power more effective or efficient. However, again, there are some math issues to address that would be equivalent to figuring out how to break the speed of light. What I mean by that is that they appear to be impossible with the math tools that currently exist. That doesn't mean that it'll be impossible forever, but it would be quite the feat to figure them out in three years. Trendline or not. Now let me TLDR this for you. If this pace of growth is going to continue, we either need a lot of money to buy a lot more compute, or we need to discover an alternative to linear algebra and this thing called off-policy learning that is necessary for a bunch of the functions that these LLMs with reinforcement learning are built to process. All right, now here he talks about another big problem. We've reached the end of the internet. So if we're going to keep upgrading our AI tools, we need a data set bigger than the entire internet. And he talks in here about using synthetic data, which is data that the AI has generated itself. Look, there's a lot of debate in the computer science field about whether synthetic data is reliable for this purpose or not. Some people think that AIs using AI generated data is basically the self-destruct button for AI. And Google DeepMind has shown that it can be useful for certain applications in reinforcement learning, but we don't know yet if it will work for natural language processing that would be required for image generation, video generation, or even just generating text. Now, I do like what he writes here, talking about this intuition pump. I find it pretty compelling if we can figure it out. As of right now, I don't think anyone has developed a way to do this, but it is intriguing and it could happen. Okay, so here he goes into some issues that they currently have. So in that video I talked about before, I talked about this a little bit and I brought up some other unsolved issues that currently exist with creating artificial general intelligence. Again, he does discuss stream of consciousness in his essay here, but he still does not talk about emotional intelligence. That's an extremely important component to ensure that we don't end up with a psychopathic life form that we can't control. And that's also going to be important for this part that he discussed discusses here. If we're going to have a coworker, they had better have emotional intelligence as well, especially if we're going to trust this coworker with corporate secrets. Leo, anyone who invests in your fund is going to think it's pretty important to be able to protect their intellectual property, or they're not going to use this human-like coworker functionality. Part of protecting intellectual property is being able to teach an AI why it's important and not just that 
it is important. Now this would require at least rudimentary emotional intelligence because loyalty is an emotion. Now here he says he thinks these models will be able to do science. Again, I don't want to be a doomer because I am not a doomer, but the experimental side of science in particular would be a huge leap for an AI to be able to do in three years. That would require a lot of breakthroughs in the robotics field that are frankly probably decades away at least. And I've always been fascinated with our lack of ability to build an AI that can code. An AI is essentially just code, but it can't duplicate and learn from what we created it to be. I always thought it would be easier to teach an AI to replicate itself than it would be to teach it to create something completely else. And I don't think we really understand why it's so hard to teach an AI to code. So because we don't understand what the problem is, I don't know if we can get that ready in three years either. Maybe Leo knows something I don't though. I've never worked at OpenAI. So it's interesting here to see him state that AlphaGo was superhuman or super intelligent. It didn't beat its human opponent every time. And I don't want people to read this essay, in particular this section, and become afraid that AI is coming and they're going to turn us into paper clips. Um, Lee Sedol, the human who played against the AlphaGo algorithm, said that playing the machine made him a better Go player. The machine and the human both learned from each other in a way, and the machine made the human into a superhuman. I think super intelligent AI could be our path out of late stage capitalism. Now I'll make a video about how super intelligent AI will help us evolve. It's on the docket. I'm just too slow at editing to work on more than one video at a time right now. Now I do want to touch on this part about super intelligence being a military advantage. Again, please watch the video that I will put in the end screen, but I simply don't think so. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I'm vehemently opposed to using AI and weapons, partially because I think killing people is wrong, but also because I just don't think it's a good idea to teach AI how to kill people. But once they're smarter than us, I think the probability of them killing us, even if they're asked to kill, is extraordinarily low. Sorry if you were planning to invest in Leo's AI weapons fund. Okay, so in that video that I keep referencing, I went through how much it would cost in both dollars and energy to create just one artificial general intelligence. And now Leo is talking about a future where we have millions of them. Listen to me carefully when I say that this is impossible unless we can figure out how to make fusion work and maybe even still once we do that. I'm not being a doomer, this is just math. Now the rest of Leo's essay has a lot to do with money and revenues and stuff. Remember, he's a finance bro now, but I'm curious. What do you think of this essay? There's a link to it in the description. Oh, and here's that video I keep talking about. You should definitely watch it next.